Hi there, and thanks for joining us. We're here today in the Natural History Museum's Beetle Collections, and I'm here with Talay, who's one of the scientists who works here. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, and thank you for bringing all these really cool specimens along. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, because I believe this actually is the biggest beetle in the world. It is indeed, yes. This is Titanus giganteus. It's the largest beetle in the world, measuring up to 17 centimetres long, wow. so bigger than your hand. Yeah, it's absolutely enormous. Um, these are longhorn beetles, and um, you can see their long antennae. And um, they are found in the rainforests of South America, so deep in the Amazon rainforests. Do we know why they're so big? Um, they get really massive because they live in somewhere where it's really warm and quite high levels of oxygen. So millions of years ago in the Carboniferous period, insects were able to get really massive. Um, some insects had meter long wingspans, for example, and um, that was because of the higher levels of oxygen in the air. Um, but now these massive insects are much smaller because of the lower oxygen levels in the air, but also they're restricted mainly to the tropical um, equator regions of the world. Yeah, I mean, still, I think, big enough that it's not one you want to find like on your bed or something. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, and then we've got also this little tiny thing down here. I was just wondering what that was. Yes, so for a massive contrast, this is one of the world's smallest beetles. So this is a tiliid, which is a feather-winged beetle. Um, and these need some really interesting adaptations because they're so small that it's quite hard for them to exist um, in this world. And I think we've got actually, so just to help everyone at home see it, we've actually got this big picture just yes. here. Yeah, to kind of show that's actually what it looks like um, when it's blown up. Um, but for these insects, um, flying through the air is really difficult. It's almost like us trying to swim through water. Um, it's really viscous. So they have specially modified wings. They're actually little rods with hairs on that they almost use as like rowing oars to kind of row through the air. So um, yeah, they're really interesting. You know, like, are there any advantages to it being that small? So oxygen um, accessibility is a massive limiting factor for how big an insect can get. So the way insects breathe, they have um, holes in the side of their body called spiracles, and this is how oxygen enters the body. And it's m a lot to do with diffusion. So for small insects, this is much easier because they're so tiny, the oxygen is able to kind of flow around their body easier just by the way they move. But with the larger insects, they have to actively pump their abdominal muscles to be able to get that oxygen to flow around their body. Yeah, because they don't have lungs like us, do they? No, so we have a very different respiratory system to insects, exactly. Yeah, and then, I mean, moving on to this next case, we've got these really quite incredibly long horns on them. Are just what is this? Yes, yeah, so this is the Hercules beetle, Dynasties Hercules, and actually this is even longer than the largest beetle in the world. We say that Titanus giganteus is the largest, but that's actually just because of its total body length. But with this one, including the horn, um, it's actually two centimetres larger, so 19 centimetres long. Um, yes, they're quite impressive. And what are they using the horns for? I mean, they look a bit like a bottle opener. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're probably using them mostly for competition. So male-male competition, fighting off rivals, um, that sort of thing. And do females have these horns as well, or is it just the males that have no, them? No, so the females tend to have um, either reduced horns or no horns at all. Um, so it's just the males that have these for display, yeah. And these also found in kind of a similar area of the world to the Titanic. Yes, exactly. Beetles. Very similar habitats in South American rainforests, yes. Excellent. And then obviously, so we've got the biggest, we've got the longest, and I think you said this one is the heaviest. Exactly, yes. So um, this is Megazoma acteon. This is the heaviest beetle. Um, but actually, its larvae are even heavier than the adult. They weigh 200 grams. Oh. Um, their larvae look a little bit like this. This is actually a different species. But the larvae of beetles tend to be at least double the length of the adult. Oh. Um, but interestingly, we've never found the larvae of the largest beetle in the world. So it could be even heavier. We don't know. Is there a reason why the larvae tend to be so much bigger than the adults they grow into? Yeah, so it's because um, they spend their whole life as a, in a larval stage, eating, basically. Um, and they're doing that to build up reserves to undergo metamorphosis and to be able to successfully pupate and hatch out as an adult beetle. And so a lot of energy is required to kind of make their exoskeleton. They normally live in underground, feeding on dead wood, and it can take up to 
um, seven years in some cases um, for them to reach maturity to be able to then pupate and hatch out as an adult beetle. And I mean, how long do the adults last in comparison? Really not long at all. So some almost like two to three weeks in some cases, sometimes longer, but yeah, not very long at all. Does being big mean they live for any longer than say, you know, something smaller we might find here in the UK? Well, um, potentially. Um, so actually this is the largest beetle in the UK. Oh, okay. um, contrast and um, this is Lucanus curvus our stag beetle um, and these live a few weeks as an adult in in the same way but their larvae live for seven years okay. underground <laughs> feeding and growing yes and do they eat the same kind of things like rotting wood and yes absolutely and that's a habitat that is largely diminishing in the UK so these beetles um, in some places are in decline um, because their habitat is is being tidied up and dead wood is not kept around. Yes, yeah, so we need to keep our forests more, yeah, rural, more exactly. wild. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there a reason why dead wood is such a popular food for all these different beetles? So one of the success strategies for beetles is that the larvae tend to live very, very separate lives from the adults. So they're not in competition at all for food. So dead wood um, isn't the most nutrient rich, but they're safe, they're buried. They um, can spend many, as many years as they need to grow and um, successfully. Um, whereas the adults, they're under very different um, pressures from predation than the larvae are. So it means that they're, they're quite successful as a group, one of the most successful groups of organisms in the world. I mean, yeah, to be honest, I think that's a really good place to end it. So yeah, thank you very much for taking me through all these really incredible beetles. No problem. Yeah, and thank you for everyone at home for watching. How do those beetles measure up to the biggest ones you've ever seen? Let us know down in the comments below. In the meantime, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe for more content from the Natural History Museum.